The day you have all been waiting for has finally arrived, my friends. Yes, today I am going to be sneaking the bubble cardigan, a wonderful, magnificent pattern by Stephen West. I think we are just shy of three months since I cast this babe on, and my goodness, you guys, it's been a long time coming. As you can see, I have knit the ribbed collar all the way around, up around the neck. There's even some short row shaping up here, but this is not yet an official cardigan because it's joined by these steaking stitches. I actually modified the pattern to be steaked. Originally, the pattern is knit flat, so it's knit back and forth, back and forth, but because I re because this thing is so huge, I was not really down for knitting um, a lot of purling rows. So to remedy that, I modified it to have steaks so that I could knit it in the round and not have to worry so much about purling. I will try this on just to give you a better visual, but um, yeah, and you can also see how much it's grown. It's it's insane. This strip of stockinette stitches down the center, these are my steaking stitches that I'm going to be cutting up um, to separate the garment to make it a cardigan because right now this is this is not a cardigan it just looks like a wonky piece of abstract art right now if, if I had to describe it but yes for those of you wondering I did I clearly I did knit the the collar first before commencing with the steaking. I mean, there's no rule saying that you have to knit the collar before steaking. You can certainly do it after. I just think it makes life a lot easier to, you know, get the collar on there and all you have to do is steak it and you're done. It will be, this cardigan will be done today. Um, you know, I just have to sit down and weave in a couple of ends and I will be ready to take some photos. Anyway, I don't want to waffle on too long because I know you're here for the steaking. So rest assured, there will be a video dedicated to this FO. <laughs> but um, that said, I do want to mention something quickly before we get into everything. You might, you might notice just a little bit something different happening in the background. Uh, and yes, uh, there is no more yarn in my cubby holes. No, I was not robbed. No, the moths have not attacked my yarn stash, but but, but I have packed up all of my yarn because as I've mentioned in previous episodes, my husband and I are looking to move. We still don't know where we're moving at this point. You know, we have a couple of, you know, houses in mind, but nothing is set in stone yet. Um, you know, we're just getting the ball rolling, putting our place on the market and, you know, having an open house and all that and all that good stressful stuff that comes along with buying and selling a home. Good times ahead. But anyway, um, I just want to give you guys a little heads up that, yeah, the background and scenery might be changing, um, changing up here and there in, in the next couple of weeks, months maybe. I don't know. It's all a mystery. So presa. Anyway, <laughs> that said, gather around, grab a cup of something, buckle up buckaroos because, because we're going to do, we're going to do some steaking. The moment of truth. We are ready to steak the bubble cardigan. And again, if you are new to steaking, take a deep breath. Everything is going to be fine. This is not as scary as it seems. And these are my steaking stitches that we are going to cut up down the center. Ideally, if you are working with superwash yarns like I am here, um, it is recommended that you add two lines of reinforcement stitches along the, the center stitch that you are going to be cutting along. This is done to prevent any yarn from unraveling because of the slippery nature of superwash yarns. Um, however, it's not necessary. I am not going to be doing it here just because, you know, Kristen, we like, Kristen likes to live on the edge. So we're, we're just not, we're not going to do any reinforcement stitches. I'll of course be gentle when it comes to handling it after the fact. But anyway, if you do want to go ahead and add some reinforcing stitches, I'll link to a tutorial down below. Um, you can also take it over to your sewing machine and add a zigzag stitch on either side of the steaking line, but again, it's not necessary. I did go ahead and knit the ribbed collar before the actual steaking process, so here's what it looks like on the right side once it's flapped out, so it has like this very nice neat line. And if you recall, when I added the steaking stitches, I did add two uh, columns of purl stitches on either side of this stockinette strip. So those two rows of purl stitches made it really easy for me to go in there and pick up and knit the edge of the collar. Um, yeah, so that is how that went down. So I'm just going to fold these up out of the way. So without further ado, I'm gonna take these beautiful Merchant and Mills um, embroidery scissors or trimming scissors. I don't know, what do you call these? I have no idea, but these are handy. I keep these in my Notions pouch at all times and they're super handy. I love them. I'm just going to eyeball this and pick the centermost stitch column. Uh, stitch column, is that a thing? Um, and, just, and just cut, so there we go. <laughs> and just follow this line straight down. 
trying not to cut into my fabric <laughs> below. It might behoove you to put a book in between underneath. There we go. So you don't run the risk of cutting into your fabric underneath. Continue cutting. Take your time, be very slow and deliberate. Um, you don't wanna, you certain, well, this is easy. You certainly do not want to rush this. <laughs> following that line down the center. Ta-da! We are steeped, my friends. <laughs> I repeat, we are steeped. So now you're left with these two strips. Again, they're not going to disintegrate immediately because I didn't reinforce them. But now, you know, you do want to take some precautions to so flip it over like so. And these are just going to fall really nicely into place on the wrong side of your work. And, and now you're gonna to wanna to take some matching yarn. Here's what I have left over from uh, this project. So uh, I'm gonna use take a length of this and I'm gonna thread a darning needle. I'm just gonna roll these raw edges under themselves and make sure they're lying flat against the wrong side. And this is exactly like, if you're familiar with sewing, this is exactly like uh, whip stitching a raw hem or raw edge, if that makes sense. If you want, you can certainly add some removable stitch markers to hold everything in place. But you know, I like to press uh, the edge down with my finger as I go. And I can also use the stripes as a guide to make sure that everything's lying evenly. So to get this started, I'm just gonna take some stitches, a couple of bites of stitches from this rolled edge right here, and a couple of <laughs> bites of stitches from the wrong side, if that makes sense. Pull through, leaving a little bit of a tail so I can weave things in later. Um, and then just create a running whip stitch along the edge. And again, you don't want to pull too tight. You don't want to create any puckers, but you just want to create a nice even line of whip stitches to hold everything in place. Like so. Um, and you know, this, while this isn't difficult, <laughs> it does take a little bit of time. So maybe, you know, pop on an audiobook, a podcast, some Netflix, and just, you know, have a quiet moment to yourself and, you know, finish finish sticking your cardigan. And you can already see, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it looks like a hot mess on the inside, especially with all these raw edges here, but once everything's said and done, your stitches do lie nice and flat against the wrong side. But of course, with some wear and you know some gentle washing, um, you're going to start to notice the stitches starting to felt a little bit, which is exactly what you want. Um, you know, the more felting, I think, on the wrong side, the better, because that just adds some more reinforcement. Just to make sure that your stitches stay put and in place. Um, yeah, so felting on the wrong side is not a bad thing. <laughs> So yeah, just continue grabbing just a couple of bites of stitches from that rolled edge and a couple of bites from the wrong side of your work and just gently pulling that through and occasionally giving your work a nice tug to kink out any, get out any puckering. Like so. And as you can see, I am not the neatest <laughs> seamstress. I can probably space these stitches out even more if I wanted to. Um, and then if you look on the other side, it's invisible, you don't see anything. So yeah, it's gonna keep going. If you think this is a little unsightly, you can always take some grow grain ribbon and lay it on top and then whip stitch that into place just to add a little more, a little more decorative element, if you will. I've never done it myself, but I would love, like if I had a really special, you know, cardigan that I was steaking, um, I could totally see myself doing that. Again, this is just very, very relaxing. <laughs> this is not stressful at all. As you can see, the stitches are not unraveling on each other, so it's not the end of the world if you didn't <laughs> reinforce your stitches. But if you are working with yarns like silk, any like super slippery uh, yarn, you probably, it would behoove you to um, reinforce your stitches just, just for that added insurance. But yeah, as you can see, the sky is not falling. <laughs> we are still here. We still have a cardigan intact. Um, and yeah, I am so stoked.
And that is one side done. Um, you know, obviously I'm gonna weave in these ends and clean things up a little bit, but you get the general idea. Um, so now I'm gonna go over onto this side and do the same exact thing, um, just on the opposite side. And we will be done sticking this cardigan. And just like that, my bubble cardigan is complete, my friends. Yes, it is blocked, it is steeked. All the ends have been woven in and I will stand up so you can see <laughs> it is, it is quite massive on me, but you can see the steaks right here. It looks really nice and neat on this side. Um, while I will admit on this side, it does look a little janky because I have all these little woven in ends. Um, I might, you know, go back in and just kind of tidy these up a little bit, but for the most part, it's, it's a done deal. You can fully see how much it's grown since I blocked it. I mean, it is huge, my friends. I'll do a little twirly twirl for you guys. The weather is actually really nice out. It's a nice overcast day, which is perfect. So I'm gonna take advantage of that and get outside, get some finished shots of this cardigan, get it up on, on the gram and, and on Ravelry and, and all that good stuff. So yeah, wow, what a journey, my friends. I hate using that word journey, but it really has been a journey. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, there are so many, there, there's more than one ways to steak a cardigan, um, but this is, again, this is the second time that I've ever steaked any, any garment, um, and I'm, I'm very chuffed with myself, uh, dare I say. I think it went pretty smoothly. Hopefully this video shows that you too can steak a garment without any drama, hassle, or, or trauma. Thank you so much as always for hanging out with me. If you're new here, welcome to my little corner of the interwebs. If you haven't already, I highly recommend that you like and subscribe down below. I put out videos for your viewing pleasure every week. And until the next video, have an amazing day and I will see you next time. Bye.